I want to take it from there with your vision statement of what New India stands. Uh, you spoke of New India vis-a-vis -vis Hindutva. Your vision statement, uh, Minister, of what do you make of those who see a differentiation in the country of between Hinduism and Hindutva? Do you see them as the same? I have just enunciated for you what my, my, my way of life is. And if there's a socio-political or economic view of my way of life, let's look at the way of life from an economic perspective. Like I said in my opening remarks, in the 70s, an economic slur was brought upon my way of life, that if you are stagnant and in need of desperate reform, you must be a part of the Hindu way of life. I think that that slur was brought upon because many presumed that the Hindu who is nonchalant, who is all accommodating, who is necessarily kind, will not take umbrage to such a provocation. But I believe that is New India needled with these kind of provocative discussions? That is why I have given you the wide berth of what my way of life brings to the country. Today, when I said that my way of life talks about good health, and I speak about vaccine maitri, and I speak about Aushman Bharat. Let's contextualize what that program means for the average Indian woman. Under the Ayushman Bharat Yojana, and I've said this multiple times, 31 crore Indians have received screenings for cancer free of cost, of which 17 crore are Indian women who have screened themselves for cancer of the cervix and cancer of the breast. Now, pre-2014, if you spoke to anybody about Indian women in the rural landscape or in the poorest of the poor, having the capacity to have a conversation around the cancer of the cervix, you would be told that this conversation will not be a part of regressive communities. The fact that the 17 crore women stepped up and utilized a healthcare program so that they could get screened means that these women were aware of the challenges and were waiting for a workable solution and I think that is my way of life. That is New India. New India provides 800 million Indians free food in a pandemic for not only two years, but post-pandemic, so that things stabilize, provides them additional support for this one year as well. New India provides close to 90 million women in self-help groups, credit worth $32 billion every year to manage. And that is the New India I'm extremely proud about. And I'll not be apologetic about that New India just because I'm a Hindu. Um, you know, um, it's not about being apologetic, but uh, I'll just take the conversation further from what you said. Let me put it this way. What is your vision document uh, for the Indian Muslim? You're also a minority affairs minister. And I would reckon um, in the country, there could be a set which maybe feels a little intimidated uh, by the masculinity of Hindutva that we talk about. Maybe as that's New why India. they have a female minister in that particular segment. But uh, jokes aside, I'm married to a micro-minority community member. I'm married to a Zoroastrian. There are barely 55,000 of them across the world. And I'm very proud when my Parsi family gets up and says, I'm not a minority because an Indian cannot be a minority in his or her own country. And I think that one has to be cognizant of the fact that when Prime Minister Modi speaks about Ayushman Bharat, does it not encompass all communities? It most definitely does. When he builds 30 million homes for the poor, does it not have homes for those who come from the minority community? Most certainly it does. When he gives Kisan Samman Nidhi a cash transfer to the bank accounts of 10 crore farmers, 30% of them, as data has shown on many platforms, are from the minority community. What is now insistent upon us is to ensure that we do not give rise to feelings of segregation and that we bring people together and say as a collective we are one nation. That when I see a man in uniform or a lady in uniform, I identify her as an Indian and an Indian alone. That when I see a child for whom the new education policy is derived, and I had the greatest privilege of writing the foundational document for it, for the first time in 30 years we have a new document that talks about a gender inclusion fund. Does it include the gender needs academically for minority girls and women? Most certainly it does. 
Um, you know, you've ticked all the boxes in terms of the schemes which are available to all, and we've seen them, how they've actually delivered. Uh, and uh, no, there is uh, no disparity in that at all. Uh, but say, as the minority uh, you know, minister and um, as a woman, um, what would you like to say, maybe as a healing bump for those who do feel threatened with this new uh, India, which also wears Hindutva on its sleeve? I think that one has to very pragmatically accept the insinuation in your question. And the insinuation is that for me to be acceptable, I need to dilute my religious identity. Would that not be, for you, a very myopic way of looking at religious identities across the country? What is incumbent upon me as an administrator is to ensure that the tenets of law are implemented well so that everybody is equal under law. So let's say when we look at Article 370, people look at it on many a platforms, I've heard a religious debate around it. On many a platforms, I have heard a community-based debate around it. But as a lawmaker, why do, why do I look at it a bit differently? That is an article that in some way denied many are laws for women and children and the backward communities to be implemented in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Would I not want equal law for every Indian in my country? Most definitely I would. So when you question me, how can I impose faith in a community towards my community? I think one needs to recognize that the term minority is not a term which is individualized only to one religion. For instance, when I was Minister of Education, IIT Council, in the history of IIT Council, had never had a female chairperson. And I remember walking into the room full of male scientists and asking them, where are the women? I was told by some of the most celebrated male scientists of the country, uh, we don't have women of that caliber. I walked out, I called a lady called Tessie Thomas. Not a Hindu. Unfortunately, I have to describe Tessie as thus today. I called her and I asked her, would she accept the chairpersonship of the IIT Council? She did. That was in 2014. And today you asked me to certify my secular credentials to you because I'm Minister Minority.